And coming up in the next few parts of the videos, you will see cutting down a bunch of trees, about 30 trees, and milling lots and lots of lumber. We milling lots and lots of lumber. We milled poplar, we milled about 5,500 board feet of just timbers, plus all the boards that came off of that as well. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy. Well, this is day five up here on the hill. We've got quite a bit done, but while I'm taking some time to do a little bit of preventative maintenance, I thought I'd also take a little bit of time to discuss the workflow of this project. If you've seen other videos on my channel, you'll know I spent quite a bit of time working on the oak timber frame pavilion that I did for my family up in Pennsylvania. And the workflow on that project was really a disaster. It, I sort of cut trees down as I was cutting joinery and this led to a lot of back and forth with the tractor to go get the tree, cut down the tree, pull the logs out, bring them to the job site. Then I ended up shuttling from one job site to another between my garage and a spot on the farm. And it was really a nightmare logistically and it took about three months. With this project, I learned from my mistake last time and I really took a lot of time to think through the workflow in advance. And for all of you who may be interested in a project like this, Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and I want to go through a few of the pieces of information that I've gained throughout this process. So step one for me was selecting the right site for the logging. When you're cutting all your own timbers, you got to think five steps ahead. You've got to think, okay, if I cut down the trees right here, where are they going to fall? How is that going to make it easy for me to then cut, sort, and stack the logs in preparation for milling? And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, okay, where am I gonna put the mill? Where are the offcuts gonna go? Where are the boards gonna go that come off and where are the timbers gonna go? So with all that in my mind, trying to think four or five steps ahead, I selected this clearing up here. I had this clearing forestry mulch, it used to be grown up with a bunch of saplings. Um, so I had this whole clearing taken down to dirt pretty much. And I chose this spot, one, because it's fairly flat. There's a lot of room to maneuver equipment and secondly, because there were poplars all around the edge of this clearing. So that's my thought process. I wanted to hopefully help somebody out who's about to start this. I would just say, take the time to really think through your workflow. Like every little detail matters because when we're talking about, I mean, I probably got about 50, 50, some, 50 logs on the ground right now. If you don't think that through in advance, you're really gonna eat up a lot of time moving all those logs around. Not only do I have a bunch of logs on the ground, I have them sorted into piles based on my cut list. So hopefully next week, what I'm, go what I'm going to do is bring the mill up here, set it up in a nice spot where it's easy to get off cuts at, it's easy to stack boards, and it's easy to extract the timbers. And then I'm going to take one pile and I'm going to cut all the 8x8s required. Then I'm going to take another pile and cut all the 6x8s. Then I'm going to take another pile and cut all the 10x12s. I'm going to do it very methodically and I'm going to transport the timbers down very methodically. And we're very fortunate to be in a spot where that is possible. And you're not always gonna be in the perfect spot, uh, but this is the perfect spot for this particular job. And so yeah, if you could learn anything from my mistake, um, think about the workflow quite a bit in advance because every little detail that you plan out will save you a lot of time, exponential amount of time in the future. <laughs>
well. This is day number eight on this project so far, day three of milling. Five days of cutting down trees, and this is day three of milling. We've got about 30 to 40 rafters to cut today, so we can probably get right to it. Alright, so this is day number five of milling. We only have a few pieces left. Now these are 18 foot eight by 12s. And so what we need to do is we need to modify the mill a little bit. So I went to a local fabrication shop and they actually gave me this angle iron for free, which is really nice. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of weld it onto the end here and make a temporary track extension to do these, these 18 foot eight by 12s. They're actually 18 feet, six inches. So they're pretty, pretty long. This should give us an extra three inches of track though which is exactly what we want. So this just be temporary. Hopefully it fits the need for right now though. One of the major downsides about welding galvanized is when you burn that metal, the galvanization has a zinc material in it and it's really, really bad to breathe in. So that's why I was wearing the respirator. Ideally, I would just get regular non-galvanized metal, but this was free, so work with what you got. Sometimes you just need to bring the whole shop up the mountain to get the job done. We brought a lot of stuff up here to get this done, but it's looking pretty good. So my welds are by no means amazing, but they will work. So the mill rolls smoothly out on this track. What we're gonna do, because this, this piece right here is good to kind of just like keep everything in the right spot when we put some serious weight on it, like even the mill head. I'm gonna cut some wood pieces just to put underneath these ends here just temporarily. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I know I made a video about maxing out the mill, but this is taking it to a whole nother level. This is gonna be, the log is probably about 20 feet long. The final result is gonna be an 18 foot six inch eight by 12 coming out of this guy. So hopefully my modifications down here hold. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a really interesting cut. Oh, I think I broke my own record now for largest log on the sawmill. This is modified HM126. This is a 19 foot long log and it is 29 inches at the base. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this. Well, that's a wrap on the milling for the timber frame shop for now. 
everything is done except for the knee braces and those don't need to be done up here and it's it's only a few pieces left so 5,500 board feet something like that that uh, was just the timbers in the shop so those are all milled uh, probably another five to eight thousand in uh, boards that came off of those timbers just a massive amount of lumber but we're all done up here now got the trailer loaded up with a few last things we got everything cleaned up as well pretty big pile huge pile huge pile of debris this is what the byproduct of about 50 trees and about 10 to 12,000 board feet of lumber looks like in the summer we'll have some nice bonfires right there and this will be the perfect feeder for those bonfires all right well we'll head back down the hill and start on another job Well, that's the end of part two in this multi-part series on the timber frame shop build from timber frame headquarters. I hope you enjoyed. Right here behind me is about 5,500 board feet of timbers, as well as five to 8,000 board feet of boards that came off of those timbers as well. So please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. There's gonna be a lot more coming up related to this build, including the pad, the finishing touches, the, the joinery, um, lots more of interesting content on this. So. Uh, stay tuned and we hope to see you in the next video.